our spotlight today is going to shed some more rays on the world of television. You'll see how art imitates life in a soap opera. But first up, let's go along with Mary as she visits the gold monkey's keeper, Stephen Collins, to find that under all that glamour is really a grown-up Tom Sawyer. How do you want other people to see Stephen Collins? Um, as a great power-hitting center fielder for the New York Mets. <laughs> In 1969, during their pennant drive, two pitchers for the New York Mets both won games of a doubleheader by a score of one to nothing. And they each drove in the winning and only run in the games. Who were they? Please don't leave a message unless you can answer this question. Thank you. Bye. Stephen Collins is an all-American man from Des Moines, Iowa, with an all-American passion for baseball. Just kidding, just kidding. There was never too much question about whether I'd be able to do it professionally. I, I couldn't hit to save my life. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it was what we call a good field, no hit. <laughs> and it broke my heart. It just broke my heart, but I couldn't hit the ball at all. I was born with uh, my right eye crossed, and I had an operation around that same time when I was about three or four to straighten it. That eye is very weak, and I'm a right-handed hitter, so when the ball would come in and cross the plate, the weak eye would take over and not see anything, and I'd swing and miss most of the time. So I was pretty good with a glove, but I couldn't hit, and there was never any question about whether or not I'd be able to make it as a baseball player. The answer was no, unfortunately. His character, Jake Cutter, the airborne adventurer, is constantly in life-threatening situations. Stephen recently got a taste of the real thing when he attempted to do a special stunt for the show. What the director wanted was a shot of, of the goose starting to taxi away through the water, Jake having to run into the water about up to his waist, grab onto the rear hatch and pull himself in as the, as the plane takes off. The last minute, uh, the director came up to me and he said, don't actually get in the plane. Just run up and, look, and get up to the hatch and then have trouble getting in for a long time and we'll cut then. Well, somewhere the communication got boxed up and the pilot of the plane didn't know that. I did what, what I was told, which was to run out. I, I ran through the water, I jumped onto the hatch. The pilot heard cut, he raced the engine. And I was left there hanging onto this plane in the water. And I was right behind the propeller and I couldn't move because if I had fallen, I would have gotten sucked under the plane the way the plane was moving. And it was a terrifying about 60 seconds. It felt like about a year. I just knew I wasn't going to die. I don't know why I knew that. But when it started to happen, I just had this feeling, just hang on and this will be over soon. And don't do anything stupid like, like try to be a hero. You know, leave that to Jake. It's just a delight to be doing something that is that much fun on the one hand. And it is very hard work, but so far it's, it's so enjoyable. And that's a very good feeling. He'd give up that for baseball? 